Okay, multiculturalism and protected speech are the next laws we want to look at activating. But this time, I've learnt from the first playthrough, um, we need to we need to balance things out. So the 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 first thought is to go okay. Like these are my objectives. Um, wanting to be egalitarian, so passing laws. Okay, so I've got to pass multiculturalism, fix speech, and the player goes, okay, well that's what I'm going to do next. Take a minute, um, look at other laws that potentially could promote and help uh, your economic growth as well, because I had a massive economic crash at the end. All right. So, governance principles, we're not going to be able to change a lot of that. We have racial segregation, we can go to multiculturalism, which will recalculate the interest group support. This uh, this could be a good opportunity to basically shift shift the public consensus towards towards those sort of more liberal ideologies, um, which is going to give more support to those interest groups, which is going to give us more capacity to further those sort of different agendas. And that's the appropriate use of the word. Um, free trade will give us more volume, more bureaucracy, and more competitiveness. No tariffs, no revenues. Protectionism, tariffs, 0.13k, so 130 ducats in revenue. Um, supported by two interest groups. I kind of like the idea of... Um, Tariffs, rural folk and trade unions, yeah, and they're the ones that I think I'm going to probably be leaning towards a government of. No, yeah. State run communism, socialism, all those fancy words. But it's just a game. I think we might want to do this. I think. It's well supported, we'll be able to put it through and it'll give us some revenue. Um, agrarianism allows us to subsidize. Don't know what an investment pool is. Collected by pops with ownership shares. Permits to be built. Okay, so we can get a bit of a pool of money together to invest in construction capacity, which might not be a bad idea. Uh, Laissez-faire, very low chance of us going to laissez-faire at this point. I feel like I want to go protectionism. Okay, so equal tariffs going both ways. Greater tariffs on exports, greater tariffs on Im less tariffs on imports. So it's more balanced. But we'll get an extra 0.13. Free trade, no extra no extra 0.1, but we're now gearing at that um, a particular interest group uh, is going to have probably a lot of economic power. Yep, industrialists get more clout. And isolationism, no. Really a toss up, isn't it? Protectionism or going towards agrarianism. Well, that's yeah. with us twenty seven percent loses two and a half thousand. No, all right. Trade policy we're going to enact protectionism, try to bolster, keep that economy on our mind alright um, okay no longer want to enact migration controls anymore uh, censorships wanted by armed forces the Anglican church landowners and the petty bourgeoisie high support all around for censorship don't think I want to okay central banking great that was a passive passive research unused construction in production all right, let, let's see what we can build that we don't actually have the population for. See, I don't... I'm really unemployed. All 
All right, fine. New South Wales. What can we put in here? Uh, okay, so we can start putting peasants to work in the mills. That's part of what we our objective is. Let's. What do we want to produce? Okay. Um. Food industries really is what I'm leaning towards. I think that's sort of where historically as well where we're gonna probably focus our economy to start off with so let's build a food industry in New South Wales that's gonna take how many um okay so that's gonna take us oh it's not actually telling us how many peasants it's gonna take us but that's fine we'll see the point is peasants can now be put to work in factories and in ooh, what do you want to do in Victoria administration oh there we go bureaucracy greater taxation more urbanization I should have done this while I was here as well So, food industry uh, produces groceries from grain, increases employment for labourers and shopkeepers. Huh. Anyway, doesn't matter. We'll build a f our food industry because we have the raw materials. I also think we want to, when we've got the population, actually build a lumberyard, more logging camps. Oh, it feels icky. That's going to require... Oh! Available labour as peasants. Great. Let's... Oh, God. I could say, which state do we want to cut the trees down in? And what's going to be the answer? What's going to make us the most money? Uh, Queensland. 0.61. Oh, I can just go here, can't I? Rural... Our maize farms, let farms, opium, logging camps, and see so we can just pick where we choose, pick where we want to build it. So, the most peasants are in Victoria. Um, I've already bought a food fact, made our food services in New South Wales. So let's just build some extra logging because we might also in Victoria. Oh no. Oh no, I don't want to build four of them, bro. Where's my, um... Where are you building them? Okay, logging camp. We only want one. But it does mean we can make furniture. Uh, which I think will be good. I think... I mean, we'll, we'll reflect the poli you know, we'll role play and we're going to reflect the politics. We've gone isolationist, so let's look at just starting from the bottom up with what we're building. Let's build a furniture factory, and I'm going to continue to focus things on New South Wales at this point. I think it just has the largest population, doesn't it? Well, not by much. Victoria might actually be. <laughs> Victoria might end up being a capital. That's the big debate. That'll be another little little internal kerfuffle and fun little alternate history if we make Victoria the head of the place. So let's do it. <laughs> Alright. Urban Centre, we want you to build a furniture manufactory. 0.95. There we go. Alright, so, expanding our food industries, 97 weeks, logging camps and furniture. We're going to start to move the peasants um, away from the farms and they start migrating now to cities and factories and we have a change in the nature of labor it's fundamentally a brewing i think up here there's certain people certain people that might think that that's kind of interesting and i'm looking forward to getting to the point where you have all those um 
all these other diplomatic plays and revolutions happening in Europe and watching how it all plays out. That's some of the fun you can have with Paradox games too. You just, uh, yeah, you can just let them run. Let them run and see what the world looks like. The alternate world. Okay, we have more influence. I think we've come back. I think we've gone up, down, and then back up again to... Right, who can we improve relationships with? Uh, Van Diemen's Land. Oh, wow, is that Van Diemen? No, no, I'm already doing that. Okay, uh, United Tribes, Bali, Portugal. So here we are. I'm going to get close to Portugal. And, I, okay, so I can only do Portugal. I can't do... The other one was. And United Tribes... Yeah. All right. So that's spending all our diplomacy. Our, a lot of our authority is all going to bolstering. Uh, we have preserved mercantilism movement. So the landowners are not a fan of protectionism as a policy. So they're trying to rally support to fight back. And this is our research complete. Central Archives. We will get greater taxation capacity. Wonderful. Uh, maximum Affairs Institution improvement um, and unlocks things for government buildings. Which, if you have a look here, you'll see that. Oh, I forgot all about this. New production method available. So you can change up as you research for these industries. They'll pretty much stay. But what happens is technology increases. Um, technology gets better um, and gives you more opportunity. So we can switch to soil enrichment farming, uh, which up here we're producing grain, 60 total. Now we're producing grain, but we're using fertilizer, um, increasing our employment by an extra 600 farmers and decreasing the clergymen and the laborers, which is interesting. So that'll have an effect on how those groups feel and how it plays out in government and the power of different parties, which is one of our major objectives is getting the intelligence yet. So we're going to go to all of our intensive grazing, um, fabric and fertilizer again, but it consumes some of our grain. That's fine. We produce grain. But similarly, when government buildings and whatnot appear, we'll have different options. So here we can do, yep, I think we'll move to skirmish infantry, stay online infantry, haven't had a play with military, obviously, because this is, you know, this is a colony. It's not really important that I'm not going to mobilise to any of Great Britain's wars. They can deal with it themselves. Uh, and my playthrough with Belgium, I didn't actually have to get directly involved. Okay, Crystal Glass has leaked our way. Ports and construction. So we're level 2 port. Assume this will show us where. Yep. So I've got a port here, and I've got a port on the North Island. Have you... No, you're still a, um... Decentralised power, okay. Alright, industrial barriers. Rousing street captive... Okay, so a couple of events leading towards our... Um... Probably our laws. This afternoon, Adrian Dutton, leader of the rural folk, delivered a fiery speech advocating for the enactment of protectionism. Great, that's what we want to enact. Good, good job, Adrian Dutton. Making appearance before the public in Canberra's main square, Adrian Dutton's powerful rhetoric left even his most embittered belittled moments impressed. Excerpt from the speech being circulated across New South Wales, fanning the fires of roaring debate. Great, that's going to give us an extra 15%. Public's convinced. So I imagine, I imagine this is this these sort of events coming up. I think is going to be interestingly based on the politicians. So it's going to be wonderful to see how we can potentially micro that in the future, as well as down the track what paradox does in their inevitable expansions. But we can also increase the popularity of Adrian Dutton, Dutton himself, and public support for the rural folk. I am going to go straight for just the enactment success because it gives us more enactment success, but also. I will be very heavily favouring the intelligentsia and anything that takes support away from them, I'm not going to go for. Because that's where we're spending all of our authorities just bolstering this one interest group. That really, if you have a look at it, 
Aristocrats, bureaucrats, there's some clergy as well. Clerks, officers, farmers, a lot of laborers. And 15 peasants. Because, let's face it, the education hasn't reached them yet. But that's what the public schools are beginning to do. Industrial barriers. Factories in Victoria are refusing to hire Aboriginal people, owing to their status as second class citizens in New South Wales. I know, I know. Us businessmen have a reputation for only caring about the bottom line. That may be true for some, but the way I see it, any venture must be built on a strong foundation of values. The Aboriginal don't understand those values. How could they? Those are our values. So, clearly, yes, everyone can go to fucking work in our factories, for fuck's sake. It's just stupid, and it's only going to make our economy stronger. So, those are jobs for the New South Welsh. But here, all hands are needed to build the future. Um, which also, segregation eroding is going to lower the Anglican Church, um, their approval. Um, which will free our populations to go into other interest groups, some of those will go into the intelligentsia. Now, I've been thinking about what technology we want to improve next. I'm not going to focus on military. It might end up that we just end up getting invaded and that's our game over at the end. We're not going to be far off, I think, discovering mines if we don't already have the option to um, build mines. We do. We do, but we do not have the labor or does that only um, require peasants let's have a look don't mind me we're all learning together extra urbanization no I think let's let the building queue potter out but I'm not going to is there anything for say furniture so if there's something that enhances our okay yep uh furniture manufacturers but that's what that, what that's going to do is that's going to drive the price of tools up if not already government groups paper and iron and artillery so yeah you can drop down and see what's expensive um i think that you know potentially if you jump on it you could we could make a paper factory and capitalize on that but more importantly it's also what we use internally and we will if we go to precision tools for our furniture manufacturing we will start consuming tools and that's something that pops up quite regularly so i'd rather make a tool machine a tool factory like have our own tool production in australia first before we worry about that and as you can see we're already getting a passive learning from um the show us we come from innovation and just from technology spread whatever that means uh, spreading to you from countries that have acquired them. Oh, it's based on the country's literacy. So, we're getting a bonus for that, probably, because we have public schools. Canneries for food industries. What is that going to need? Iron and fish. I'm sure we can build a fishery. The only other thing I was thinking society is nationalism. Um, it's... I'm going to save that until we get things get a little bit quicker. Let's instead work on our canneries. Enhance our food production, which will be up in 65 whole weeks. Yeah, on the first playthrough, I literally just blitzed through and I just built, 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 and then I crashed because I wasn't managing the population in the game properly. But this time we will. And we're going to keep a much closer eye on you, Van Demons. I'm looking, I'm looking at you, Hobart, after the last game. Turn around and all of a sudden every other state's Van Demons land. Um, we'll also potentially get to a point where we can colonise. Um, and we're going to do the general colonising where we just sort of go and cohabitate. And pop on a little bunch of the islands out here. But again, that was the previous playthrough. It might not go that way. So, Intelligentsia is on the way up. Yeah, so it's lost clout. We had to make some tough decisions. Um, enacting public schools, I think it was. Now we've got protectionism. 
So if you want to check it out, I absolutely recommend you check this out. The thing about Paradox Games is whatever era, like the from you know like the eight year eight hundred, or even earlier than that, you, you've got um, Imperator, um, Imper Imperator, whatever it is, Rome, where you uh, can play a similar sort of game, but just you know focus on the Mediterranean, Italy, and the old powers around the Mediterranean. You can have a World War Two global experience with Hearts of Iron Four. You can play Game of Thrones in a way with CK. And this is the economic simulation. And like a lot of the Paradox games, it comes out and I think, you know, eventually we'll get to the meat of it. We'll find out, you know, it's bare bones and might be lacking certain things, but those things will come. Yes, you're paying for DLC, but I'm fine with it. I, you, I just get, you get so many hours. Okay, so we've got some diplomatic clout to spend. Okay, we're cordial with Van Diemen's Land. We're still working on Portugal. Who else? So we've, we've clearly reached, and I haven't been paying attention, you reach a sort of a cap of increasing relations. We can bankroll. Ooh, do we start doing this early? Do we have the money? So, for example, we can look it down and bankroll Van Diemen's Land. We get 180k off our income each week. And there's a 1% chance they'll have an obligation. That 1% chance they'll have an obligation. Yeah. A very low chance they'll get an obligation. We can also bankroll Nunga. Okay. No, we can't bankroll um, decentralized nations. So bankrolling gives us an obligation, and I'm assuming that how it comes into comes into whack with like I'm assuming it's like a favor or a hook from Crusader Kings 3 that when we get to the when a diplomatic play is happening and people you're trying to get people to sway sides obligations will help in that regard I'm just mainly concerned about what I've got to do to prepare for when Federation the Federation event pops I'm not sure how it does whether it's a date but basically you get an event coming up in big 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 glorified letters here that you can f you know form Australia but you need to have control of all of the territories. Which makes it a little bit harder, but I'm looking forward to finding out how to do it. Uh, Louis Hope has died. Alright. Governments come together and we now have protectionism. So we've balanced out tariffs from imports and exports. They're effectively the same where before um, it was skewed towards, I think, imports had the great tax. But now our exports, and as we're producing, once we start producing canned food and furniture, those are goods that we can also export and really make a bit more money, especially when we go up to Queensland here, which we will, and look at um, look at some of these sugar plantations. You know, cotton, tea, these products. Wheat farms, not so much. All right, so we've passed it. Um, we'll see what change that has on our balance over time. We're on an uptick. Uh, oh, the defamatory article in Victoria. What's going on down here? Down here in Melbourne. Just southeast from Bendigo. A newspaper called the Victoria Evening Post has printed a bigoted article about the Aboriginal people living there. We can suppress the article or we can let it be released. Well, yeah. Um, Australian history, man. We can suppress it. Um, when we'll lose authority. Or we could ignore it. Which is a standard of living modifier for Aboriginal people in Victoria. That's really interesting. A bigoted article... Yeah, it's like, ha ha, like, don't employ them. No, suppress it. We'll lose the authority, but, you know, in the nation that we've built so far, everybody works together. And we're not going to tolerate anybody not working towards our glorious future as an egalitarian nation. How is our population? Let's have a look at our cultures. Australian, Aboriginal, animist. Uh, oh, turmoil. Oh. Okay, so there's 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 a greater con there's a greater chance of radicals in First Nations people. That you know makes sense. They call it the frontier wars. There were there was obviously fighting. Someone rocks up in your backyard, 
You know what I mean? And we can form Australia as a kingdom. Alright, and this is the nation formation. Great. You need to control all state reasons for a minor unification. Interesting. And we can split... Clearly we can split the North Island off into another state. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. That's where we're going. And we've just found where that information is. But yes, everyone works. Food industries are coming along. 19 weeks and we'll have our canneries up and running. I don't know how far our research is away. 19 months. Great. That's fine. Cultures, population. So a lot of people are impoverished. Peasants. There's a nice break up here. Clergymen, aristocrats. The population balance. And you can see, you know, I love this. Just this simple model. Like, so a balanced population, 36% of the population, but 18% of the political strength. So I, I, I'd be really fascinated to be to learn more as I go forward about some of the details um, of the simulation. And like everything I do, I'd also be really interested in the process. So who do we want to improve relations with? We can damage relations. I'm not sure the purpose of doing that yet. Uh, Netherlands. Yeah. So basically, I want to improve my relationships with the, the big boys. So we've gone up four ranks. We are still an interesting new power. And we've learned that unlock logistics. Uh, passively. Right, we're just letting um, letting the colony develop. Food industries will start drawing peasants into the city. Okay, there's a political movement from the Nash the armed guards and the petty bourgeois. They want to enact a national guard. Um, gets us home affairs, and you know, reduces radicalism. Could be a good thing. Could be a good thing down the track. Um, actually, no. That's where we're at. That reminded me. Thank you, game. We need to look at what law we're going to enact next. <sighs> and I think... Well, again, we got to, I, I think we want to balance it out. And I think, for the most part, it might be, you know, we go an economic law, which we just did, and then a political law, um, moving us towards the egalitarian objectives that we have so multiculturalism protected speech protected speech i'm fairly certain requires i think human rights to be researched which we're a little bit away from uh anyone want to join other groups they are angry that's fine eventually the armed forces just goes yeah enough of this i want to get out of this and we can form a big party legitimacy says okay all right, so political stuff. Let's have a look at enacting multiculturalism. Fourteen percent chance. Um, it's going to take some time. It's only the intelligentsia. Cultural exclusion. So cultures are accepted based on shares a cultural trait with any primary cultures in their country. Multiculturalism let everyone in. And that's that's huge for us economically because we get the population, which means we can expand the industry, and we check off an objective. So let's do one for them, one for us. Okay, it's gonna take a little while. Fourteen percent success chance, but hopefully some of the events will also help us to um, boost the intelligentsia, who have been really this playthrough. They have right they. They got stronger so much quicker in the last playthrough. Interesting. And what's some of our others? Passing laws, yes. Completion in progress, yep. Uh, so, peasants are less than 35. That's already underway by building the factories. Um, and universal suffrage. That might have been a, a, a law that we could have put through better. We could have put through better. Good English me. Um, free speech, no. Do, 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 do. Property women, we'll increase that later. Yeah, wealth voting. So universal suffrage, and yes, you can enact anarchy. Because you know that's a that's a fun policy. That's also going to be a fourteen percent chance. Um, 
but it would have given us a huge bonus to our legitimacy. Now let's um let's move play towards the objectives. So once I pass these, they'll potentially issue me some more. We're looking good on the diplomatic front globally. No wars, no active diplomatic plays. We're improving our relationships with several people. Is there anyone improving their relationships with us? Insignificant power making our way up. We've just popped up another rank. So puppet, yep, we're a puppet of Great Britain. Uh, Van Diemen's Land are actually are actively damaging their relationship with us, while we're improving our, the relationship. So. They're trying to hurt their relationship. We're trying to stay friends. It, it And it's, what, not going anywhere? Yeah, we're cordial. Okay, Van Diemen's Land. I don't know what you're up to. Should I... Should I... Should we have an experiment? What happens if I damage relations? What's Van Diemen's Land got going to it? GDP's 87.9. Um... Versus, yeah, they've got nothing compared to us. Okay, and these are the strategies they're going for. Ah, agriculture investments, balance of power, promote liberal reforms. Their government is... Okay, also intelligentsia, but also intelligentsia and armed forces. That's a whole different path to go down. Um, so they're much of the same. Yep, they're all going to be the same there. Why are you damaging my relations with me? Why don't you want to be my friend? I mean, I know you're down here off on your own. Little island under the island, but come on, mate. Alright, building logging camps. Our cannery's going, our income's coming up. Look, spiked up, beautiful. Logging camp will also give us some resources, but more importantly, um, it means we're not going to have to import for our furniture. The Crusade for Change. And this is the multiculturalism event. All right, let's do it. The ongoing effort to implement multiculturalism has captured the imagination of the li of Liberal Party, <laughs> the Liberal Party, which has added full-throated support for the new laws part of its central platform. The country yearns for change. For too long we have watched the nation suffer. It's not right to call for upheaval. It's not right to call for changes that are long overdue. I tell you now, we must embrace the future. Liberal Party champions change. Plus 10 momentum for the Liberal Party. That's great. That'll rub off on the intelligentsia. The people speak and the nation shall listen. I can... Electoral support. So I can give them bonuses or we can get the enactment and test chance up. Clearly, the people will speak. We will follow our due process. And we've just inherited realism, which is going to give us more prestige. That's lovely. It's going to help us with our rank. Uh, the labor movement. Yep, so labor movement started to spread to us as well. So just for the market and talking, so populations are spreading and sharing, and we're going to see where hotspots and issues burn up. I mean, who knows with this game where where the communist manifesto shall spread where how the the great powers of europe will develop in the lead up to world war one which i think is ultimately where we're heading towards stockpiling gold very low okay low legitimacy in government let's have a look at that right so what's making that up wealth voting Size of government. Ah, the industrialists have left the Liberal Party. Okay, well let's. What if we reform, boot the industrialists? There we go. Back up to fifty percent legitimacy, and we continue to bolster and push down. Bolstering intelligence here. Yes, loyal. Clout slowly heading up. And propagandists. And yeah, and a migration attraction, which is great. So basically, yeah, if you make a, a, a place that actively prevents, you know, works against 
racism and bigotry and just says hey let's all come and work and build something strong together let's work as we not I people end up coming in the game at the very least but I think it's you know safe to say that it's probably oh hang on we're at war again thanks England oh back at the, against the great Qing Const oh now they're conquering okay maybe this is the full on opium war they want to conquer um I don't know what the pro where the province is Zhejiang and they're liberating Jili right okay this this must be this is more opium war now well they've opened the market now they're just taking territory again we're not going to manufacture uh, manufacture we're not going to mobilize to follow Britain into any wars uh, we've got enough to worry about in just trying to get people here and working a Aboriginal voice I think I know which one this one is yes this is the one that I threw up on TikTok and so you can see an accurate depiction of indigenous Australians there with their <laughs> with our turbans <laughs> I understand the art is limited intelligentsia has been championing the passing of multiculturalism starting in their own ranks an Aboriginal politician may take over leadership in the fight for the culture's acceptance in New South Wales sending a message to others is a part of it it's not the only reason we need to reevaluate who is truly capable and deserving of certain positions in our organization who has been passed over and ignored in less enlightened times if we succeed all of New South Wales will have to do the same Quality starts here. Extra enactments except chance. A character appears. New character appears. Which will be the leader of the intelligentsia. Uh, Yelagonga Wonga. Wonga. That'll be Wonga. Yelagonga. Sorry, I'm trying to get pronunciation right. I don't know how their phonetics were or where it comes from. Alright, so the intelligence here as a movement is now headed up by this fella, Mr. Wonga. Wonga's so close to Womba. Uh, anyway. Um, uh, interest group approval. So opposition's approval will is negated by that because they have approval ratings of each other. Uh, bonus of popularity. And copy character. Very healthy, healthy fella. Look at him. Betty, shake a leg. All right, Britain's at war. Good for you. Keep it up, sunshine. Because we're at war, the um, our different equivalent ports. Because you got to think when you're playing this game, you you know you might play it as Great Britain. In which case, you're managing not just here, but also you've got all the colonies that you're also managing um, from a perspective of building and production. And that's why these building menus are set up the way they are, um, so that much more easily at a glance. You can sort of see what's building where and where you can build. Um, but we're about to finish our furniture manufactories in many weeks. We have an election. Ah, I did not see the results of that election. But we have a free reform. Nobody wants to join anyone else. We, it looks like, again, dipped in the elections. But that's all right. We continue our strive towards tomorrow and really wonder what Van Diemen's Land's up to. I wonder if I start bankrolling him. Could I afford it? Yeah. Alright. War with Great Qing has broken out. Ah, uh, they want war reparations and they want to conquer Zhejiang and liberate a bunch of territories two arms so now I've got a HQ here um, I can choose to mobilize all generals I don't have I haven't put any generals in and I can activate conscripts if I need so I think mobilization I don't get to control don't even think I get to control where they're gonna go oh oh cool so there's some um, ways you can use your military in local states emergency relief 
Promote social mobility. Oh, did I could do that? I'd have mobilised them earlier. Get the army in. Yay, school. Learn more. Right, Netherlands. Uh, 69. Great. Cool. Cool. We're just waiting to enact multiculturalism now. But it's 50% success right now. We should hopefully click it over in the next cycle. Um, denoted by this blue ring here. So, landowners still want to restore mercantilism. This is all very low. Um, the churches desire radicalization around enacting censorship is quite high. Uh, but support overall for censorship is low. And now that we have a cannery, our population should be moving away. from peasants, yep, yeah, and moving into working in the food industries. Great, mechanical tools. Okay, so I can choose to I can choose to upgrade my industries. Or can I? Because no, I don't have the wood in the manual furniture yet. I can choose to open the furniture industries, but uh problem is I'll need tools to do it and I think that's the next building we need to build on our rise up. Um, yep, and that's going to bring more peasants into the cities. New South Wales is 26. Oh. Um, definitely want to build something in Victoria then. Do we build an administration? Extra infrastructure. Arms industry would be worth it for an expert we don't need it paper paper something that we'll need paper's expensive so in victoria which is adjacent to the logging industries there i don't know how it simulates moving resources within your own state whether that's instant or free or whether it tracks something but we've got logging camps here so in victoria let's expand some paper mills oh devout scandal Oh no. It's been revealed that Louis Jeffcott of the Anglican Church has been having a secret affair with a member of the clergy. His resignation is being demanded. Oh, naughty, naughty, Louis. Uh, should we ignore it uh, and that'll just affect him or should we mm, really hit it and hopefully diminish the support for the Anglican Church? Yeah, we're going to diminish support for the Anglican Church. No offence to Christian brothers and sisters out there. Much love. But in the politics of this land, the alignment between our objective and the interest group is significant. All right, great. We've got canneries, food industries, which we can put in straight away. Um, what does that... Okay, so we need iron and fish, which means I think we should start a fishing industry as well. Just saying. All right, let's jump in our buildings. We want to look at uh, our urban buildings. We want to look. So these are the city buildings. These are the factories. We can change to a canneries, um, which will increase our production and increase our income. Great. So that's canneries, tooling workshops, steel tools, crude tools. Just takes wood and labourers. Um, 23, steel tools, engineers and machinists, labourers, not sure about whether or not we change that. We haven't built it yet, so who cares? Let's cross that bridge when we get to that. We're building our furniture manufacturers, our food industry is going, and then we'll jump on our tooling workshops, orders down here. 30 weeks, 36 to weaken... 30 weeks till Australia can proudly declare to the world that yes, we can build a chair. Alright, we just did one of our... We're enacting... Oh, well, no. Technology-wise. Uh, we're about to enact multiculturalism. Protected speech is going to need human rights. 
Human rights is an 11 years to research, so we'll save that. I'm pretty sure that's what it needs. Uh, protected speech. Uh, okay, no. Oh, wait, yep. Has invented human rights. So that's a long way. Protected speech is a long way away, and that should reflect your own gameplay playthroughs. So you don't want to spend 11 years researching protected speech. Um, that will spread naturally as well, which will help you. You want to look at what is a little bit shorter. And because we're not going to worry at all about military to start off with, we're basically going to try to diplomify our way out of it. Let's look. So we can um, patent stills for food industries. 35 months. Mechanized workshops. 35 months. Um, which will help us with furniture. Let's, let's do the top level first. Distillation. And just focus on, economically, what is it that we build here? Um, what is it we can keep internal? And then lead towards what can we build to go out. So we, I mentioned the idea of, can we fish? Fishing wharves, fishing wharves, fish two. Okay, again, we can go buildings. Rural. Uh, fishing wharves. There. So, same income everywhere. There's more peasants in Victoria. I kind of want to put more industry into Queensland as well. Yep. So, that'll start producing some fish, which we need for one of the processes for some reason. Ooh, and after that, Queensland, let's absolutely look at the sugar. Well, let's have a look at the market. Sugar, tea, and cotton. What are we building? We know we know where the cotton's coming from, um, but what's the sugar and tea? I'm not going to go up here and there's a search bar or something. No, but I can go. Probably buildings. Sugar. Can I access the menu here? Sugar. I want to see it in the market. Oh, here we go, British market. 17.7 .7 going up. Uh, cotton. Okay, here's what's coming in going out. Great. Yeah, so I guess we'll just work out. Well, you know, do it the simple way. Okay, do it the simple way. Ah, oh, beautiful. We have multiculturalism here in Australia on the 26th of December, 1843. So Merry Christmas. We are a multicultural nation. That locks off the next of our three. And as I mentioned, protected speech is going to take 11 years. It's going to take time to develop. While you're waiting to do that, Really, we really need to focus on our economy. Um, the great thing about multiculturalism means we're going to get more migrants. We're going to get more workers and peasants. Um, which means we're going to have the bodies that need to go into the factories for us to rise to a great power and hopefully this time not go bankrupt and manage to successfully um, form Australia. But conveniently enough, we've just come up on the second hour, so I'm going to put a cut in here for the sake of the YouTube people. Thanks for checking this out. Uh, keep following as we continue this playthrough interact with all the buttons that you're apparently meant to click on. So for the rest of us, let's keep going. Oh, I'm stretched there. And we got a war going on that none of us care about. They're allied with Tibet. Well, look out, Great Britain. Tibet's, Tibet's on the way. 
Okay, battle here. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay, so Britain's, um, Britain's, Britain's messing with China's stuff. Uh, th does... Ah, Macau. It's Portuguese controlled. Yongsen. Nope, they're fine. And we're number 69. Alright, I think one more one more session we'll see where we're at. Yama yeah, Malia, welcome back to our playthrough of New South Wales in Seeking an Egalitarian Australia. So we've had wonder lots of wonderful, lovely, good feeling, fuzzy things. Intelligia the intelligentsia um, interest group is being led by an Aboriginal man, uh, Mr Wonga. Um I'm got to look into where they got the phonetics from but I do have a good degree of faith in paradox and their his their love for history researching getting things as right as you can considering it's just a game so we're looking to encourage liberal thought those are our big objectives uh, enacting protected speech that's going a long way off so we're going to focus on our econ economics and we're going to do everything we can to um, get the intelligentsia to a powerful state but that is proving a lot more difficult and then I thought, they're not becoming popular and the Anglican Church, while I've been suppressing them, has not had the events to really knock it down. Probably because I've also been balancing out the enactments of laws with other economic laws, particularly protectionism, uh, which you can see here the landowners are against. And they have some support for restoring mercantilism and there's some support for censorship, which... You know, sometimes you've got to compromise and sometimes the benefits may have to outweigh, the short-term benefits may have to outweigh your choices for a long-term vision. We're building uh, furniture manufacturers in Victoria and then a tooling workshops queued up in New South Wales, then paper mills in Victoria where the, um, where the logging industries are and we've got some fishing wharves because one of our new processes here, um, requires fish it might be the okay well, orchards vineyards no yeah anyway i'm not gonna muck around with that too much but when new technologies come through so here furniture manufacturing we can use precision tools we'll be able to produce luxury furniture um and it requires tools more tools which we don't have. Okay, so people of the UA uh, people. So Han Chinese. So we're having a Chinese migration to China, which is interesting. Um, to China. A Chinese migration to China is probably going to be a bit of a boring event. But no, Chinese migration to Queensland. I know there was a large number of Chinese uh, people that migrated here around the Victorian gold rush. Um, I got a chance to visit the Chinese museum there. Back when I lived down there and it was very interesting um, and as in most places they were I think building railroads and mining but we have a different country this time through we are a multicultural nation if we have a look at our laws that we've enacted so far uh, we have protectionism because uh, we need to manage and protect our economies and we're building our industries from the bottom up uh, so that uh, we can be as self-sufficient as possible and reduce the need for imports but we enacted it, uh, public schools uh, and we enacted multiculturalism um this is the next law where go oh, i should have done this earlier on this is where it's happening so we fundamentally are opposed to a lot of what the anglican church um stances are so we're opposed for when it comes to rights of women and free speech um we're opposed on governance principles for the most part uh they're neutral towards our they're strongly opposed to multiculturalism um they endorse they don't they're not worried about public health insurance but they oppose public schools so we're 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 against them and we're our these groups would no doubt within the net, the systems of the game be battling each other for some for the uh share of the population but one of the things I didn't enact, that I did enact the last game, not because it told me I had to, but because I thought it made sense, and rightly so, was the separation of church and state. Only 12% chance, but 
really you can enact anything in this game it's just how long it takes you to enact it is based on the support groups and what total separation will do um let's see written to this recalculate their interest group pops so that will move no doubt people away from the anglican church or have the freedom to that pop might have the freedom to have a chance to shift where previously it had a much lower percentage chance we're on negative authority um i feel like we can stop suppressing oh because the negative article suppressed and opposition group approval what's going on there okay so it comes to the approval of different groups our legitimacy is coming down the industrious industrialists are falling behind um yeah and i'm starting to think that maybe part of running these games and playing the long game might be that we want to shift our government um and embrace those who are opposed but in doing so we want to look at okay if we want to say shift over to the government here what laws will they so we could get colonial resettlement which is cool but i think our population i, I started clicking off colonial resettlements looks like it's a very slow process uh, naturally but i think it's also a slow process because we didn't have the population and i wasn't as focused professional army i can get behind um uh yep i can get behind the taxation so we can get behind a lot of the stuff that the armed forces are behind the Ang anglican church no the landowners possibly um but what we'd like to see is the conservative party split up and the armed forces themselves i think tend to be the one were the ones that do it in my last playthrough but we're just going to try to put through the total separation of church and state and that should help us in promoting the intelligentsia regarding our other journal um, options yes there is a war going on uh, more opium Qing dynasty britain messing around with china uh peasants are less than 30 25 percent of the population uh we're working towards that uh, that's happening based on the factories that we're building and universal suffrage and that is also once i have separate title separation universal suffrage everyone has the right to vote that's the next big thing i think that's going to move us towards having the intelligentsia being supported but anyway if you tuned in on uh, youtube or twitch or otherwise i hope uh hope you're enjoying the playthrough not really going into much about it unfortunately too like i said it's a bit dull when you're playing colonies because you're just sort of building up for nothing but that's also quite enjoyable um great britain just colonized the south island hold on yes they did so great britain there's that big vic no, that's big vic big vicky has just colonized the south island van diemen's land actively is trying to annoy me but I'm also bankrolling them at the moment. So there's a rolling 1% chance that they'll have an obligation owed to me. I don't know if that's going to help. Yeah, so currently they are obligations to us. So we succeeded. I'm fine with that. And, oh, the United Tribes are improving relations with them. But they're no longer trying to upset us. Damaging relations... I don't know what damaging relations does whether or not that gives us some sort of right to maybe turn around and say hey these people aren't good um your majesty maybe they should come this region should come under our control gonna have to deal with this authority deficit i think it's gonna have to come from a foil reform oh are the industrialists actually available now all right let's reform oh no 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 they don't like that it was like one monolithic block well that's it everyone everyone's in charge what what would that even do give us all the laws yeah 
Yeah, no, I, I want to keep you out of power. I, I really want the armed um, forces to um to split away. Uh, field works great. Extra army defense. That's just been a passive passive research. We're doing well. I can't look at that. Economy's um economy's doing very well. We may even even consider lowering our taxes. We will lose 715. So that's going to halve our surplus. Um, we can increase government wages, which will add another 100. But that's intelligentsia approval, petty bourgeois, and the armed forces. So, yeah, let's um, see how it works. That government wants to increase wages. Alright, that cost us not much, but it looks like it gave us... Um, yeah, see here. So, so I can cut the income that we've got in half, which is fine. As long as it's green, it's green. And I'm pretty sure we still have other industries. So our tooling workshop's coming along. Tools are usually something that's um, expensive in governments as well. Iron too. And I think I've got the capacity to build iron mines and keep moving these peasants into new roles. So look at this, Queensland. So is everyone moving to Queensland? Yeah, so, yeah, MUE. So 54,000 um, people have moved from China. Uh, so they make up 27% of the population and Blackfellas are 45% of the population. So Mahayan religion is starting to come. Uh, peasants... Rural folk and the Anglican Church, a lot of clout, not a lot from the intelligentsia. Yeah, so a lot of rural folk here, which is fine, they're in government. 